Hello, Ms. Barron here. In this video, I'm going to be going over the last few slides in the meiosis notes or the meiosis notes, which is slides 19 to 23. So I'm going to start here on slide 19. So we've been talking about meiosis or meiosis, two different ways to pronounce it, still mean the same thing. And Meiosis, again, is the formation or the development of gametes. And gametes are your sex cells. And that includes egg and sperm. So we talk about meiosis very generally. But since we're talking about the development of gametes and you have egg and sperm cells, um, they actually uh, differ a little bit. Okay. So the process by which sperm cells are made, we're going to start with that first, that is called spermatogenesis. So spermatogenesis, this is the process by which um, sperm cells, which are male gametes, um, Oh, excuse me, this should just say sperm. Okay, so sperm, which are male gamete cells, are produced in the testes, which are also called the male gonads. In females, the process of, so the process of meiosis, specifically in males, that would be spermatogenesis because sperm would be made. And then meiosis in females, which is used to produce and make eggs, that is called OO. Yes, it's two O's, so we say OO genesis. So OO genesis is the process that produces mature egg cells in the ovaries in females, that is the female gonads. So again, we talk about meiosis or meiosis very generally, going through prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase or telophase one, and then uh, that second round of division. Um, but in males specifically, meiosis or meiosis, that is spermatogenesis, and in females, that would be oogenesis. So this process is still the same, it's just the last uh, phase is really the telophase or telophase two. That's where we're going to see a difference in males and females. So let's start with spermatogenesis. So at the end of spermatogenesis, you will have four haploid, we call them spermatids, okay? Um, these are pretty much just uh, sperm will have to like mature um, in the testes. So right now they're called spermatids and that is created by equal cytokinesis. So remember cytokinesis, okay, just as a side note, this is the division of the cytoplasm. Okay, so the division, remember cytokinesis, this is the very last step. It kind of happens at the same time as uh, telophase or telophase. Um, remember, meiosis is focusing on the division of the DNA, the chromosomes. Cyto uh, cytokinesis is the division of everything else. So the cytoplasm, all of the organelles, pretty much everything else in the cell that's not DNA. So in males, spermatogenesis will give you, you we know this is meiosis or meiosis, we get four haploid cells in the end. Um, we get four spermatids because they're created by equal cytokinesis. So basically the cytoplasm is divvied up equally amongst all those four cells right here. And eventually they'll mature in the testes into mature sperm. And um, just a little bit about sperm in particular right here, the different parts of it. Uh, there's actually three major sections. So first is the head, so that's right here. 
Um, it actually contains a digestive enzyme that will help for um, that sperm cell during fertilization to um, enter that egg cell. And of course, that's most importantly, that's where the DNA is. And remember that DNA is haploid. So in humans, that is 23 chromosomes, okay? Because when you unite the sperm and the egg in fertilization, 23 plus 23 is 46. That would give you an entire human being or person. Um, we have a mid piece, and this actually has um, a lot of mitochondria. Remember, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and that will supply ATP energy. Um, this will help the sperm cell move um, with its flagella. Uh, remember the so this is the flagella it's not labeled um, but that's the tail remember it's a whip like structure um, that will help the sperm cell to swim um, to the egg cell okay so that's just a little bit on uh, the different parts of a sperm cell all right so that is what happens in males um, the process is a little different in females so in females, this is oogenesis. Um, so this is different. You still technically get four haploid cells are created, but only one of them will actually survive and be viable, okay? So the one that's going to survive that's here, that's the mature ovum, okay? So the um, ovum, that's the egg that I circled. Um, it received all of the cytoplasm and organelles during cytokinesis. So this is actually unequal cytokinesis. So instead of what we had here, which we divvied up the cytoplasm equally, in this case, we are not divvying up the cytoplasm equally. We're actually putting all of the resources into one cell in particular. So this is unequal cytokinesis. And those three cells that you kind of have left over that are not viable, those are what we call polar bodies. Um, that will be, they just get reabsorbed into the body. Uh, they're basically not used for anything. Um, this is an egg that would have to be fertilized in order to get a child. So, um, yes. So one polar body doesn't undergo meiosis again. I know it's showing all of them here. Again, we're just putting all of our, kind of all of our eggs in a basket, so to speak. We're putting all of the cytoplasm into one of these cells because the main reason for this is that if this egg does get fertilized, this cell needs to be a lot larger because if that gets fertilized, it's going to have to become eventually a child and you're going to need a lot of resources um, like that cytoplasm, the organelles, in order to go through those rounds of cell division, to go from a zygote to eventually a, you know, a child that would be born. So that's why we have to put all the cytoplasm into one egg. So the main difference is spermatogenesis is equal cytokinesis, oogenesis is unequal cytokinesis. Okay, so a little bit more about differences between male and female. So males will continuously create sperm um, pretty much throughout their entire lifetime. Um, pretty much it's unlimited. However, females are actually born with as many oocytes, which are potential egg cells, as they will have in their lifetime. And usually it's the onset of puberty when, um, in females in particular, so essentially getting your period, um, that egg will be created and released each month. That's ovulation. Um, if that egg is not fertilized, uh, then a woman would have her period. So once women run out of eggs, that's um, 
you know, it depends on how it differs for person to person. Usually for most people around the, their 50s, I would say, um, that's when women would start to go through menopause because essentially they're no longer uh, producing eggs anymore. And then um, meiosis in males and females. So this is a very good example of cell differentiation. So um, pretty much this uh, cell, this germ cell, um, kind of like a type of stem cell. It's um, not, it doesn't have a specific function or purpose yet, um, but eventually through this process, it becomes a specific cell with a specific function, which in this case is reproduction.